Hey guys, today I want to talk about Craig Berry's pump and dump scheme. So I thought about this for a long time and I did talk to Travis, Travis Wu, and who had interviewed Craig Berry and an extensive interview as well as whenever like Travis and I like make a video, we always talk before and after. So it's the before and after parts that are kind of interesting. And I'm pretty sure and I can probably verify that Craig Berry's full-time job is at MTG Finance. Uh, he wrote, uh, he asked, answered questions on an article uh, that you could go read where he says that, yes, I make a lot of money from MTG Finance. So I kind of wondered, how is that possible? Because I tried it and it didn't really, I mean, you do make money, but it's not above minimal wage. It's not incredibly, um, it's not enough money to buy 50 moats, right? I, essentially, that's what it comes down to is even if you had the original capital sitting on the moats and waiting for their price to go up. Uh, in particular, one card I'm gonna talk about is Lion's Eye Diamond and how this kind of works and how it is possible to make money from MTG Finance, but in a very scammy, schemy way, right? So imagine that I have a bunch of Lion's Eye Diamonds. I've uh, slowly purchased them and buying the lowest on eBay. Whenever I see a Lion's Eye, let's say Lion's Eye Diamond is hundred dollars right now. I'm using that as an example and whenever I see on eBay it is a seven dollar copy I just buy and that happens a lot because not every bid auction sometimes end at a weird time or sometimes not enough people see it. So every time I buy for 70 or 80 dollars I'm under value so I know that I am set and unless it really tanks I'm okay with the price. Then I've accumulated 50 to 100 copies of Lion's Eye Diamond and I make a Facebook video or a YouTube video saying that, hey guys, buy out Lion's Eye Diamond, but I already have my copies. I myself would not be buying it. And the way I would frame this video at is, oh, you know, I want to help my friends and family or, you know, friends and just random strangers who watch this video, right? Anyone who watches this video, I want to help. And then the video gets leaked. A lot of people at MTG Finance get really excited because they feel like uh, the one person is going to really buy the card out. Um, at one time and just spike the price like crazy. So they go out and they buy copies of it. Now, in this scenario, Craig doesn't actually buy copies during this time where everyone's buying. He sells copies into the hype. So if he bought a, even he even bought a Lion's Eye Diamond for let's say $100, which is was what it was worth, and now it's at $150 or $200, he can sell it to someone at $150 if it's $200. That's an easy sale. Then he gets rid of all his copies, he's good, and then the card goes down back to 100. Uh, that is the story of Lion's Eye Diamond, and the only way that anyone makes money from the, the uh, line chart of Lion's Eye Diamond, if that's what you did, if you sold it into the hype, right? You cannot buy into the hype, that's going to be very bad, and you need to buy before the hype, create this fake hype around it, and then sell into the fake hype that you created for, from your friends and family, but mostly random strangers. Because the one thing I really didn't get is if you truly wanted to do a buyout, the worst thing you can do is tell other people you're doing a buyout. Like it's so illogical because that means every single time you want to buy a new copy, it's more expensive. So let's say Craig was going to buy the cards and as a buyout, like he stated in the video. At point A, the card's $100. But as soon as he tells everyone, the card, the next time Craig presses a button and refreshes, it's $120. Because people have bought out all the copies $100. And then if Craig wants to buy at $120, he's, you know, he could have bought 100 if he didn't tell anyone. And that would be a terrible way to make money because you would actually be buying, you would literally be buying into the hype that you created to, to take a substantial loss after. Um, that cannot be the logical way he's making money. So it is possible to make money from MTG Finance and to do it as a full-time job, which I truly believe that's from Craig has said it. Um, I talked to Travis. He does MTG Finance as a full-time job. He has no other jobs and he makes money from doing this pump and dump. Like it's really a pump and dump. Uh, sometimes it works. Moat is still at its newer price. I don't know the volume of moat or how often a moat actually moves, but Lion's Eye Diamond has dropped to its original price where it was pre-spikes, pre 
spike. Now, is this a safe model? Is this a sound model? Is this something I would suggest you guys to do? No, it's very hurtful to the magic community, uh, which Craig admits it's not good for the magic community. And secondly, there are just way better ways to make money without as much risk. Like working at McDonald's would be one of them. And there's no shame. Like I, I feel like a lot of times when I read these articles or when I watch these videos, there's this shame that you work a full-time job. There's no shame in working a full-time job and having magic as a hobby. The reverse situation is very, very taxing. Uh, and it, where that your magic is your full-time job and you don't have an actual job. I can only imagine how taxing that would be, but there's no shame. Like I feel like there's this misconception that just because you have a full-time job, you can't make magic content. No, I mean, there's really, I don't, I find that ridiculous. Anyway guys, bye.